What's up guys? How many of you were thinking about going back to 2010 and buy some stocks of leading tech companies such as Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix and Google known as FANG? This video will be about 5 stocks which might be as successful as the FANG stocks in the next years according to analysts. I was very surprised by the list of these companies called SMART. So let's see what are these smart companies and why should we pay attention to them. I broadcast the most fresh news on the stock market and top picks recommended by analysts of famous investment banks and funds. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when a new videos are posted. You are also welcome to comment and give a feedback on the job I'm doing. I'm open to new ideas and look forward to develop in order to give you the best stock market ideas. Let's refresh our memory on Fang stocks. It was back in February 2013. At the time, CNBC's Mad Money host Jim Cramer introduced an acronym for stocks that represented the future. They had a dominant position in their market and strong momentum. Those companies were Facebook, Amazon, Netflix and Google. He suggested that they had the potential to really take a bite out of the beers. As a result, he called them FANG stocks. How did FANG stocks do since then? They returned 507% on average, compared to a mere of 70% for the S&P 500. That's 436 of alpha generated over 7 years if you invested in a balanced basket of these 4 stocks. FANG stocks later rebranded as FANG when Apple was added to the mix in 2017 have remained outstanding performers, driving the Nasdaq 100 to a record high recently. While the people own all FANG stocks always wonder which companies truly represent the next wave of dominant technology companies that are likely to see their positions reinforced over the years and continue to outperform. The same way FANG stocks were hidden in plain sight in 2013, I believe the next leading technology stocks are well known by most investors and already recognized by Wall Street for their superiority and the inherent underlying quality of their business. The real challenge is not to find them. Anyone could have recognized the obvious superiority of Facebook, Amazon, Netflix and Google back in 2013. The real challenge is to buy them and hold them for many years. This prompted the analyst to offer a new acronym for five companies that represent the future of the digital economy. They are clearly dominant in their respective industries and likely to generate fang-like returns in the decade ahead. They call them the smart stocks. You may have heard of them and recognize that they have a lot of potential. But the chance that all of them are already in your portfolio is pretty thin. I bet that most investors will find them overvalued, too hot or believe that they have missed the boat on them. Yet, analysts believe that investors who are looking for exposure to the highest quality businesses for the long term would be hard pressed to find better places to put their money. Let's review what these best of breed companies are and why analysts believe the smart stocks could make your portfolio look much smarter. S is for Square and the rise of digital banking. Square is a company disrupting payment processing thanks to its two main ecosystems seller side with point of sale and managed payments, the other side is consumer side with cash app. Shares of Square have doubled in price since April, while the S&P rose only 10% in the meantime, and it's cash app that has started to get all the attention in the Cash App now represents 33% of Square's gross margin, the business being flourishing and is on the right track to justify far more than its current 55 billion market cap over the long run. This is even more palpable when you consider the 160 billion addressable market, estimated by management. Let's look at the long-term performance of Square since going public. The very strong top-line growth has been followed by a steady improvement in cash from operations. Revenue growth has been above 20% year over year consistently since going public. The most recent quarter was a reacceleration with 44% revenue growth. The long-term trend is extremely positive with expanding growth and operating margin. 
Gross margin has improved consistently since 2016 from 30% to 40%. Operating margin has followed and turned positive in 2019. Free cash flow has more than tripled since early 2018. And if you need a reminder of the rising popularity of Cash App, compared to its main digital wallet competitor Vinmo, owned by PayPal, you can see below the current interest generated by Cash App based on Google Trends. The upside potential is quite phenomenal for Square, and its most exciting prospect for me remains its optionality. Founder CEO Jack Dorsey is willing to be aggressive with a land and expand strategy that could pay off in a meaningful way over time. The next one is M. M is for Match Group and the rise of online dating. Match Group was recently spun out of Interactive Corp. In many ways, Match Group is the anti-Facebook. Its portfolio of dating apps are the last place where you want to find your friends and family. Online dating remains a micro-trend that is deeply misunderstood by older generations who didn't grow up and didn't experience being single in the age of the internet. For some people, there is a profound stigma around dating online, and many believe the entire thing is a scam. Online is now the primary way couples meet, and this trend is not slowing down, as illustrated below. By operating several of the most relevant places to date online, such as Tinder, Hinge, or Plenty of Fish, Match Group has built an empire as the leader and first mover in this category for several decades. Even assuming strong disruption over the years, chances are that the most relevant place to find a date is going to be on a Match Group property. The company offers a freemium model with a multitude of apps serving a broad range of demographics and psychographics. There is still an extremely strong untapped potential in ARPU, be it through premium features only unlocked behind the subscription paywall or potential advertising which were so far almost absent from the platform. Match Group is only a $30 billion company as of this video. And there is a very long runway ahead if you look at its obvious tailwinds. The rise and the extension of single lifestyles, the stigma around online dating fading, underpenetrated categories such as emerging market. Match Group is benefiting from long-lasting, secular trends that could turn it into an absolute giant with no one in sight able to get the know-how that the company has built over several decades. Let's look at the long-term performance of Match Group since going public. The impressive top-line growth over the years being followed by expanding growth and operating margins, both on a non-gap and gap basis. Gross margin has improved steadily, reaching a very high 76% in 2019. Operating margin has followed, reaching 12% in 2019. Free cash flow has more than tripled since early 2016, showing clear economics of scale. Match Group's properties are also all showing impressive culture and leadership, no matter where you look. The company recently added several new directors to its board and it appears to be in a very good hands. The letter A is for Alteryx and the rise of data science. In a world dominated by the digital economy, data is the new oil. And to sift through complex and rich data, companies need to find new ways to collect, organize and visualize the numbers that are relevant to them to educate business decisions. In this context, data analytics and data science have become key functions in most organizations. At the crossroads of communication, programming, statistics and business, these functions encompass many departments from IT to sales to business intelligence all the way up to the C-level executives. One of the challenges of this era of data analytics and data science is that many users end up struggling with high-powered software when they don't have a programming background. This is where Alteryx comes into play. Alteryx is championing a new type of platform that makes analytical power accessible to all data users within an organization. Their software supports a low-code model that enables users to create solutions even when they have limited knowledge in computer programming. The company is offering an end-to-end -end analytics platform covering data preparation, blending, mapping, merging, cleaning complex sources from all around the web, heavy analytics applications with a large library of functionalities coming from its integration with many other applications such as Microsoft Azure, Amazon Web Services or Google Analytics, workflows and visualization tools and users can also connect with other apps like Tableau and Click. The company differentiates itself from the wide range of other analytics platforms thanks to its open platform that is proven to be scalable. 
offering repeatable workflows and is easy to use. Let's look at the long-term performance of Alteryx since going public. Alteryx has been able to grow at an outstanding pace, all while remaining profitable and cash flow positive since 2018. As you can see below, the top line growth has been above 50% year over year consistently since going public. The most recent quarter was a slowdown to 43%, only due to the global pandemic that has expanded sales cycles. The long-term trend is exceptional, with improving growth and operating margins over time. Gross margin has improved consistently since 2015, from 79% to 91%. Operating margin has followed and reached 9% in 2019. Free cash flow has turned positive in 2017 and is growing fast. Alteryx has a founder CEO at the helm, which is another strong indicator of long-term outperformance for this promising software-as-a-service company that is still relatively small with a market cap of less than $12 billion. The next one is R. R is for Roku and the shift to ad-supported connected TVs. Roku was spun out of Netflix when CEO Reed Hastings decided to abandon the bug that was supposed to ship as a Netflix player device. In turn, Roku might very well be the next Wall Street darling of video streaming. You can see that Roku has grown out of its hardware premise to become a pure play in ad-supported connected TV. The company offers the largest agnostic CTV ecosystem that supports all streaming services and offers its own ad-supported channel. By investing in Roku, you are betting on the death of linear TV. The shift to digital advertising is likely to accelerate over the next few months, with additional tailwinds provided by COVID-19. Roku is firing on all cylinders by optimizing the three pillars of its growth. User growth via partnerships with TV makers, hardware sales, active accounts were up to 37% year-over-year to 40 million in the most recent quarter. Engagement growth with users spending more time watching content. Streaming hours were up to 49% were up to 49% to 13.2 billion most recently. And the third one is R Pro Gross, with revenue per user or hour improving over time. The company was up 28% to $24.35 in the first quarter of 2020. This trifecta of revenue growth could drive Roku up and to the right for the foreseeable future, even assuming tough competition in new markets outside of the United States. According to management, primetime linear consumption was down 18% year, year over year from mid-March to late April. For adults under 35, half of their TV time over the last month has been done on, on OTT and streaming instead of linear. Meanwhile, streaming and Roku was up 8% in April. Let's look at the long-term performance of Roku since going public. The top-line growth has been accelerating since Roku went public. Revenue grew 55% year-over-year in the most recent quarter. The long-term trend is exceptional, with expanding gross margin and economies of scale. Gross margin has improved steadily since 2016, reaching 44% in 2019. Operating margin has followed and is on track to turn positive soon. Cash from operations has improved greatly in recent quarters and is likely to continue this way as the company scale. Just like Alteryx, Roku has a founder CEO at the helm with Anthony Wu. The last letter T is for the trade desk and the rise of programmatic advertising. The trade desk is a digital ad platform serving the programmatic ad market connected TVs, mobile, video, audio, displays, social and native. Just like Roku, Trade Desk is benefiting from the shift to digital advertising. The company helps its customers make the most of their advertising dollar across the internet. In a hypothetical long-lasting stay-at-home economy, media consumption is not going to slow down. Advertisers will be where consumers are. Even factoring the impact of COVID-19 in 2020, eMarketer is projecting digital ad spending to still increase in 2020 up to 2.4% and to resume double-digit growth in 2021 and beyond. For many years, ad tech's been perceived negatively by Wall Street with challenges around effectiveness, fraud and overall lack of transparency. The Trade Desk is trying to break through as an ad tech company focused on ethics, transparency and quality. There were some information back in 2019 
about the reasons why the trade desk's vision for a robust and competitive ad tech space outside the walled garden of Facebook and YouTube was likely to pay over time. The stock price has almost tripled since then. The trade desk is another fantastic way to play the rapid growth in ad-supported connected TV and beyond. Connected TV is the fastest growing segment of the company, still growing 100% year over year the most recent quarter. Let's look at the long-term performance of the trade desk since going public. The strong top-line growth has been followed by a steady improvement of operating income and rising cash from operations. Revenue growth has slowed down over time, most recently due to COVID-19, but it remains elevated at 33% in the most recent quarter. It has re-accelerated several times before. Gross margin has remained stable and extremely high at 76% in 2019. Operating margin has remained very elevated at 17%, decreasing slightly due to an increased effort in research and development in the recent year. With its tailwinds and the consistency of its operational performance, it makes perfect sense to see the trade desk now trading right above $20 billion market cap. If management can execute on the vision and continue to lead the way in programmatic ads outside big tech's world green, the future is bright. As far as leadership and culture are concerned, you can rest assured that the trade desk is in good hands with founder CEO Jeff Green leading the chart. He is loaded for his vision and the company has been previously celebrated as the best place to work. The most outstanding businesses of the next wave of dominant digital ecosystems are easy to find. By now, most investors have come across the smart stocks and had plenty of time to recognize their superior quality and strong tailwind. The real challenge for most investors is to take the plunge and buy them. When stocks keep rising to the new highs time and time again, buying requires a leap of faith. The notion that the easy money has already been made or that you have missed the boat is very seductive. This mental model has unfortunately kept many investors at bay. Analysts believe the smart stock should be cornerstones of a portfolio exposed to the rising digital economy we live in. An economy driven by data digital payments, targeted advertising, streaming and new social interaction at your fingertips. There are some ideas that you could turn your portfolio into the smartest if you include Etsy, Shopify and Twilio to the mix. But that will be for another video. This is it for today. I hope this video was interesting and useful for you. Do you have your own acronym to suggest for companies that will lead the digital economy moving forward? Let me know in the comments. Stay home, subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. Bye-bye.